And who thought February would be a bad month? Hello everybody and welcome back to Very Biased Opinions. It's time for another review of another Oxford game. Today, the Yellows were at home to Accrington. Well, there's only one place to start really, isn't there? There was some news before the start of this game and it is bizarre. It's Carl Robinson has been linked to the Blackpool job and not only linked, they've made a formal approach for him. Oxford United have denied it. There's been no real formal comment. But it's so strange. It's so strange that they would just come out and make the approach without you would think there's also almost be some like uh, talks already gone on it's a strange one I really hope it doesn't happen you can't think Carl Robinson would leave Oxford after he's put so much time and effort into them to go and join a Blackpool side that looks a bit of a mess but obviously he left Charlton to come to us so maybe he just likes taking on putting out bonfires who knows but I really really hope Carl Robinson doesn't leave he's I think he's won us all over really hasn't he the past year I actually remember when we played Accrington away last year I think we lost 4-2 and I was adamant I wanted Robinson out at that point I really wanted him to leave and he's completely changed my mind well done to him well done to the club for sticking with him because he's done a great job don't go anywhere so moving on to this game and uh, going into the Oxford United team news, there are two changes from the side that had a great win at Ipswich last time out. Due to a couple of injuries, really, Ford and Holland are the players that have come out of the side. A uh, little bit of injury concerns, a little bit of tiredness from those two. Uh, means Long comes back into right back and it means that George Thorne gets a start in central midfield. Bit of a change around in that midfield three. It means Goran's going to play a little bit further forward with Thorne sitting behind really good to see Thorne play and he's going to be an important player mark my words let's hope he can stay fit and healthy is there a more overlooked side in football than Accrington I probably not as many times including many times I've thought in the past I oh, will beat this Accrington side and they've turned us over they did the double over us last year we couldn't beat them this time up in the in the away fixture despite leading twice they came back to draw 2-2 and they just thoroughly deserve to be in League One. They're 14th place at the moment, so it's going to be another season in League One for them. Then themselves have come off a really good run. They had three wins out of the last four games. The last one was a defeat to Rotherham, but there's no shame in that, is there? Rotherham seemingly beat everybody. You just absolutely know that this could be a potential banana skin. Oxford United really have to be on it to make sure that that really good result against Ipswich doesn't fall by the wayside. And thankfully, the momentum has not been halted. This scoreline will make Oxford look a little bit flattered at times, because I don't think Atkinson was certainly not that bad. But it did end up with another convincing win for the Yellows. It was Oxford United 3, Atkinson Stanley 0. Accrington certainly started this game the better and really pushed Oxford back, but it was Oxford who took the lead with the first bit of quality that they really showed in the game. A little bit like the Ipswich game, although this bit of quality came a lot earlier. It actually came from an Accrington attack. It was a really good block by Long, which forced Oxford into a counter-attack, and that was a running theme of the first half, really. Oxford's best moments certainly came when they hit Accrington on the break. But the break came with Brown playing a lovely chip ball out to James Henry, who got to the edge of the box and then drilled a shot low into the bottom corner. Generally, when Henry's back in the goals, it shows a good up to in form for Oxford, so this was a good sign, a great start to the game. And the first half really ebbed and flowed. I mean, it's a real testament to Accrington. I would say the biggest thing I would say to Accrington's credit is they, they made Oxford seem like the away side for a lot of this game. And that doesn't mean to say Oxford played badly. It just meant that from Oxford's main, main attacks came from just when they counterattacked, as I said before, which made it look like it was more suitable the way they were set up for an away performance than a home performance. Maybe it was the midfield three that were a little disjointed, but Oxford weren't quite at their fluid best. And really, you have to say, Accrington really should have been 1-1 at the break. Eastwood really kept us in this one. Yes, we defended quite well, but Eastwood made some great saves, including a superb double save to deny Clark. Accrington weren't going to go away in this one. You'd get the feeling Oxford needed more goals. Very, very dangerous scoreline at half-time, but Oxford are leading by a goal to nil. But the best thing you can do when you're defending a one-goal lead is go out and get that second goal. And that is what Oxford did early in this second half. It put everybody at ease. It was Maddie Taylor. And it was very, very kind of Accrington to leave Matty Taylor unmarked in the box. Again, it was another good move. 
Again, Marcus Brown was involved in it. He played in Brannigan, who got his cross over to Taylor, who was unmarked, and who made, made a nice, easy finish, really. 2-0 to Oxford United, and maybe we can relax. And that did kind of take the stuffing out of Accrington a little bit. They certainly weren't as good in the second half as they were in the first half. But that doesn't mean to say that they gave up, not by any stretch. They were still dangerous. You still knew that they could get a goal at any time. And if they did get it back to 2-1... That would certainly be a nervy for the Oxford fans. However, we've been good in this position, haven't we, this season? There's been back in the where we were in our real purple patch around about October, November. When we got a couple of goals up, we rarely gave it away. And it was done and dusted for the Yellows when Oxford made it 3-0. 72 minutes. It was Taylor again with the goal. I think that's 15 goals now for Matty Taylor. I think it's 13 for Henry. What a fantastic pair in these two are. No wonder with those two being out injured or semi-fit that we had a slump in form but now that they're back we're looking really sharp again that combination of Henry feeding Taylor looks a really good one moving forward in the league and Taylor's just playing with a hell of a lot of confidence he knows that if he gets into the right areas now they're going to find him and he's going to be able to score goals and this is how this goal came about it was a really good ball played through from Sam Long to Henry Henry's cross, Taylor unmarked again. Thank you, Accrington, for leaving him unmarked again. He scores with a header, 3-0 Oxford United. Nice and easy, no problems. Three points nearer the playoffs. So Oxford overcame this banana skin really comfortably in the end, and it certainly has turned what we all thought a difficult February into a really enjoyable one. And now we come up against Southend and you would really fancy us to win that one. I mean, come on. I don't want to say it. Do I say it? Do I? Okay. Surely we're going to beat Southend on Saturday. So enjoy it, Oxford fans. Another superb win. The only worrying thing is obviously with Carl Robinson maybe going to Blackpool, but... Don't do it, Carl. Just don't do it. That'll just about do it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. That helps us out so much. And if you like the videos on the channel, think about subscribing. And if you do subscribe, hit that notify bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. I'll be back very soon with another review. And remember, if you're looking for detailed football analysis, you're probably in the wrong place.